Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snailus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In the previous video, we compared between macronutrients and micronutrients. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about minerals. But before we do that, we need to understand the difference between vitamins and minerals. For instance, vitamins are coenzymes, but minerals are cofactors. What's the difference? Let's figure it out. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Remember that the macro nutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. The micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. The vitamins are subdivided into water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. The minerals are divided into macro and micro minerals. Why do we call them vitamins? Because we thought that they are vital amines. Most of them are not. When I say that vitamins are coenzymes, what's an enzyme? An enzyme is a catalyst. The reactants will bind here, and then the reaction will take place and before you know it, you have the products of the reaction. There you go. Reactant, enzyme, reaction. And then the end result is products. Does the enzyme need helpers? Yes, just like a pilot needs a co-pilot, enzyme needs coenzymes and cofactors. These are non-protein molecules, but the enzymes, for the most part, are proteins. Cofactors and coenzymes are present in your cell at low concentration we call them micronutrients for a reason. And then you can recruit them only when needed. Coenzymes versus cofactors. Coenzymes are relatively larger in size. Cofactors are smaller. When the cofactor is present in a transient fashion, we call it co-substrate. But if it's permanent, it's called a prosthetic group like the famous cytochrome C. Watch my video on the electron transport chain to know more. Cofactors are usually inorganic. Coenzymes are usually organic. Cofactors are the minerals, coenzymes are the vitamins. If you want to be technical, vitamins are precursor to the coenzymes. For example, this coenzyme, NAD, comes from niacin, which is vitamin B3. So in that sense, vitamin B3 is a precursor to this lovely coenzyme. Here are some examples of the cofactors that your body need. We have iron, we have zinc, we have potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, copper, and much more. These minerals could be transition metal ions or could be alkali or alkaline earth metals. Go back and review your periodic table, please. You'll find these on the left side and these are in the center. And then the vitamins are divided into water soluble like vitamin B, which have many subtypes, vitamin C, the fat solubles are vitamin K, E, D, and A. Let's have an example. Do you remember glycolysis? Glucose becomes pyruvate, and then pyruvate becomes acyl-CoA, and then acyl-CoA can enter into the TCA cycle. Of course, this happens in the aerobic conditions. What's the name of the enzyme that converts pyruvate into acyl-CoA? It's pyruvate dehydrogenase. This wonderful pyruvate dehydrogenase requires five coenzymes, such as thiamine pyrophosphate, which came from vitamin B1, FAD, which came from vitamin B2, NAD, which came from niacin or vitamin B3, lipoic acid and coash, coenzyme A, sulfur, hydrogen, and this came from pantothenic acid or vitamin B5. So I remember them as my Teflon company, TFLNCO. If you want to learn about toxicology and the different toxidromes that can affect the human body, for example, aspirin toxicity, acetaminophen toxicity, anticholinergic toxicity, and much more, download my toxicology course on my website, medicosisperfectsnellis.com. If you want to master the anion gap, the osmolar gap, acidosis, alkalosis, hagma, nagma, base excess, base deficit, compensated versus uncompensated, download my acid base imbalance course on my website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense.